Hey everybody, Erin here, a founder of Engineering Radiance, creator of the Migraine Freedom Program, and I'm logging on to start our special event with Karen Dubs, um, who's one of our Migraine Freedom Coaches, and let me make sure she can come in here, looks good. Um, yeah, she's joining us today as a longtime fitness professional, a, works with professional athletes, even Olympic athletes, as well as you know people who just um, enjoy running and want to stay fit. As a trainer, she's a yoga instructor. Um, as you'll see, she's very fit herself and has managed to do all this despite migraines. So I want to talk with her and invite you to join me and talk with her about how she does it and what advice she gives her clients um, you know, for staying on track migraines, getting back on track after migraine and things like that. She's all too familiar uh, with these struggles. And I see she's coming on here right now. So it's one of our special events for Migraine Awareness Month. So I appreciate you uh, tuning in and joining. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, Karen. Hi, Erin. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me okay? I sure can. Sounds fine. Okay, good. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so they see a few people are calling in here. Um, this was a, seemed to be a hot topic. We had a lot of interest. I think it's a common, you know, very relatable struggle of just the reality of, okay, you have had a migraine or you're prone to migraines and it just throws your whole life off track. And staying fit and, you know, exercising once in a while is just one of <laughs> probably a, like not even the top priority of the things that gets shoved to the side. And yet we all know it's, it's, important <laughs> yeah. to feeling good in the long term and our long-term wellness and things like that is still important even if it comes after family and work and all the other stuff we're trying to juggle it's still in there and we're kind of aware that it's getting pushed right. to the back burner sometimes yeah, it's, it's it's hard enough to be fit in a normal life but we're all so busy you know raising kids full-time jobs you know aging parents whatever it is that's going on it's it's hard enough to be healthy and fit and then we have another thing derailing us from our fitness routine. So yeah, I can totally relate to it. Um, I've been there and done that and um, have overcome plenty of obstacles myself. So happy to chat about it. Yeah. For people who don't know your story, um, I, I was explaining as you were calling in that you work with athletes and you train athletes, but you also have migraines um, yourself. So how has that affected your ability over the, over the years to keep up with all of that? And, um, you know, how have you stayed positive and persistent. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely been a journey. I've not always been, um, I, can't, I can't say that I'm always positive about it, even though I as aspire to do that. I mean, there are definitely times where I just hang my head down low and I feel like I'm doing everything right. And I, 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 you know, it's frustrating. And it's easy to get into that sort of victim role when you're in a lot of pain and it keeps happening. You're like, you know, my business is called flexible warrior. So I try to have that warrior mentality, but at the same time, um, you know, it's it, like I said, it's very easy to feel just like a victim because it's so, it's so disheartening, you know, to have this pain. Um, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I can say too, that I'm, I'm in a better place now. Um, I've been in the fitness industry for over 30 years. So it's, I think it's like 33 years at this point, And it's definitely been a roller coaster. I've had migraines throughout that time. But over the last like two years, having met you and making other changes that I hadn't previously done, I'm in a way better place now, even than I was two years ago. So that's what I would encourage everyone to really acknowledge that this is a journey. Um, I know it's hard. I mean, trust me, I know it's, t it's terrible um, to have that additional stress in your life. Um, but, you know, we'll talk about a few tips as to, to some things that people can do um, in order to maintain, uh, you know, and make your health and your wellness and your self-care a priority. Um, but, but definitely thanks to you, I am in a better place now, even than I was just a year or two ago. Seriously. I mean, I know oh, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we, we all as, as the, the recipients of this knowledge have to take action. You know, mm -hmm. the coach can only do so much. The human actually has to follow <laughs> through. So I deserve some credit as well, but, yes. um, you know, but yeah, you know, thank you for sharing your wisdom and knowledge. I always like to thank you for that. Oh, well, of course, my pleasure. <laughs> and, you, and you inspire yeah. me too, to stay on track with the self-care because you do do such a good job. Do you feel like working in the industry has uh, kind of made it not optional to stay um, active and stay fit? Well, like, abs yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah. I, but there have been times where I think that I need to, ch that I have thought, well, maybe I should just change careers because there mm -hmm. were things that I was doing, um, physically that were actually exasper uh, exasperating my migraines. And, you know, one of the things that I'm going to encourage people to do is definitely have that awareness of what works for you. Cause we're all so different. So I, I can tell you a few tips, um, and, and we will share some little bits of wisdom as to what you can do, um, as a migraine person, migraine warrior. Um, but we're also different. And so I think, I, you know, like what, so as a yoga teacher, for example, I had to realize at some point, this is probably a good, like 10 or more years ago, um, that headstands, <laughs> shoulder stand even, and some people might not even know what this is, headstand, shoulder stands, um, arm balances, some of these stands so plow, that are like, in, yeah, <laughs> yeah, plow pose, yeah, a lot of extreme flexion on the cervical spine, um, you know, the Instagram worthy poses, the ones that are like the wow, like super cool poses. I stopped doing those years ago because, and it was very humbling. It's, and it's kind of, it was kind of embarrassing, you know, like, who are you? Like, you're a yoga teacher. You should be able to do all this. But the truth is we're all on our own journey and, um, that letting go and acknowledging that, you know, what works for me doesn't work for everybody. And that's okay. You know, I think that's really part of the healing journey. Um, and knowing that we're, we're all just supposed to listen to our bodies. I know it sounds so cliche, but yoga is not, you know, like doctors will send, um, their patients to yoga for to mm -hmm. a yoga class it'll be an advanced really hard challenging class but they'll send them to a class because they have back pain for example mm -hmm. but they're not saying you know there's all these different varieties of yoga so really for people that have back pain or migraines or any sort of chronic anything they should be going to very gentle stress reducing um a lot of breathing techniques a lot of gentle stretches that's what people really should be doing but in our culture we're like you know more is more we got to push harder we want to be stronger and we so everyone sort of goes to like you know hot yoga for example let's go into a 110 degree room and try to kill ourselves like that's the mentality yeah and then you know they they get worse so i i guess i would encourage people to really acknowledge you know i it's like the goldie locks and the three bears if you do one kind of yoga and it doesn't really resonate with you then try another and keep experimenting and follow your intuition and really honor your body because mm -hmm. it's not supposed to feel hard necessarily. We don't have to make it be hard. It can be enjoyable. I know that you love to dance, for example. Yes, that's a big deal for me just to stay active these days. And before I go off on that tangent, I see some people are listening. If you, if you want to chime in, tell us what gets in your way of staying fit or what you do um, to overcome those challenges. By all means, like speak up. Uh, <laughs> I could bring you on or you can like share your comment um, and I'll try to keep an eye out for that. But yeah, dancing, um, that kind of comes up for me. Like I used to be, uh, before I got really sick, <laughs> I used to pretty be serious about training. I would uh, follow half marathon training schedules and like really push myself to stay on track. And I, I feel like that's kind of part of a personality trait that can get people into <laughs> trouble with autoimmune disease. <laughs> like that push Absolutely. Push. The type and, uh, yeah, you it was very type A. And uh, I mean, you could have told me this before. I never would have listened. But that's just looking back. Uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? But <laughs> I've kind of yeah. evolved. I don't know if I'll ever go back to that, really. But I know that moving is important. And I feel better when I move my body on a regular basis because I do spend so much time on the computer. So I know it's important. I know that I feel better when I do it. I just had to find something that is so fun and exciting. And I love to do so much that even after, like, uh, you know, maybe I got a cold and I was out of commission for a while or, you know, was detoxing and like really just could not <laughs> for a yeah. while that I just want to go dancing so much that it will pull me out and, um, you know, I'll go. So I think just finding or my, my one tip that I would share for people that are trying to like deal with this problem of constantly getting back on the bandwagon after being thrown off for a yeah. migraine or any other reason, it just happens to people with, you know, who have these health challenges a lot more <laughs> than the average yeah. person that we're always having to get back to it. But it's easier to get back to it when you really love what you're doing. So whether it's kickboxing or something, but just huh, maybe you love running, but maybe you don't. And just <laughs> right. so make re realistic about do something. that. Yeah. I think that's such an important point to share with everyone because um, exercise in general can help actually to prevent 
migraines. It actually can induce them for, for some people too. Um, but it boosts mood, it boosts endorphins, it boosts circulation, um, which is good for healing. Um, it can reduce stress. It can help your sleep, the quality mm -hmm. of your sleep. There's so many good things about it, but the, the number one thing that I really try to encourage people, and I think you, what you're saying, and we're on the same page with this is the joy factor. Like, don't try to do something that maybe you enjoyed 10 years ago, but maybe your body's in a different place now. Um, but do something that actually relaxes you and brings you a sense of joy because that's where the magic is. So yeah. I, for example, I, I stopped running, you know, I do run still on occasion, but I just turned 50 a couple months ago and I was just like, eh, you know, I'm, I don't feel great when I'm running some, I did in the past and there were times, there were moments of greatness with it and did all the races and you know, it's a, it has an addictive quality to it too. So there's a fine line with it. Um, but walking my dogs for me, that's like bliss, total bliss. And having a dog for dog, I have three, you know, I'm not necessarily recommending that, but they are really good to help you get outside and get your exercise in. They will, they will encourage accountability you. partners. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're great accountability. They don't talk back. And, um, and you know, I just think that that's a, an important message to get across. Like do things that make you feel good. For me, mostly like walking and hiking are two of my favorites, getting out in nature, getting fresh air. Um, your activity level is moderate. It's not like, you know, crushing activity. Um, so you, you can do it, you know, for me, if I have a migraine, um, I typically have what I call like a hangover for mm -hmm. about a week after. So the, the intense like stabbing pain where you're just hunkered down has passed but there's this hangover factor that lingers for days after. And I really try to still, you know, even though I'm not feeling my best, get out, go for a walk, Outside. get some it's fresh good. air. Yeah. yeah, so I, and, and definitely pursue, so make a list of some of the things that really, you know, whether it's gardening, um, swimming. Swimming cycling. is good. Yeah. I like swimming and dancing because it opens up this area. And for me, yes. like this tension is a lot of times what's, absolutely you know, going to cause problems. So if I don't do something like that, then. Yeah. I yeah. For a lot of people, and I know there's a, a video in, in, in the one module on your program, that's a myofascial release. Um, this is one thing that I do. Like if I'm in the thick of a migraine, there is, there is nothing happening. There's no exercise on the at all. Right. And I, right. But, but, you know, I can lay on the floor on a, on a, um, myofascial release ball to kind of massage some things out or like the trip, like the occipital points at the base of the skull, if that's a, um, something that triggers migraines for you, it is one for me. Um, so that is great. Essential oils, hydration, all these little things, they're not exercise and they're not, um, you know, they're not going to make you fitter, stronger, help you lose weight or any of those things clearly, but there are little self care things that you can do when you're in the migraine, you know, black hole that will help hopefully speed the recovery. Um, and you know, I think that's just so key because ultimately prevention is the, the ideal, right? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> when you're in the thick of things though. So we talked of, like in terms of getting back on track, finding something you're really joyful about, maybe like easing back into it with some, just getting out, side and getting moving is a little bit in the right direction. What else has helped you or your clients get back on track with the motivation and the and yeah. mindset after they're just, you know, maybe this is happening once a month, maybe it's happening every week. Right. Like, how do well, uh, two things. One is I recommend um, the 70, 30 mentality to take that stress out because we're, you know, like you're saying earlier, perfectionism, type A's, go, go, go. Like we're the ones that are more prone to all of this stuff, I think anyway, right? Um, and so cut yourself some slack. One of the things that I really try to get people to do is acknowledge that less is more sometimes. Like it's okay, it's totally okay. You just take that stress off of yourself. Um, and 70, 30, I'm sure, I don't, I'm assuming that you probably are familiar or you know, 75, 25, 75% 75 of the time, 50, 50 is another way, 50% of the time, <laughs> You're, you know, depending on where you are in your journey, um, you're, you're taking the right action. You're exercising, you're eating healthy, you're getting your quality sleep and your hydration and all of those things are priorities, right? And you're cruising along and maybe you're sidelined, okay? 
And so you just take that pressure off of yourself instead of feeling guilty and stressed, that's only going to make it worse. Um, that you're acknowledging, okay, you know, I did really well for a while. I'm just going to cut myself a break. I'm going to rest. I'm going to allow myself this recovery time and I'm going to listen to what my body's communicating to me. And so I think that's so, I know that that's been so key in my personal healing journey is knowing that, <laughs> how do you say it? Like your body is not your enemy. The migraine is not the enemy. You want it to be like, you're angry and you're upset and you, you hate that migraine, right? But when we think about it as an opportunity to learn from it and uh, grow from it, I know I'm here right now, you're here right now, we're here sharing our stories because we had pain. Yeah. And so if we, instead of looking at it as, you know, the being a victim, we, we look at it as an opportunity to learn and be a better version of, our, version of ourselves. Because that's how, I, I mean, there were times... 10, 15 years ago, I was in my early 30s. I should have been so much healthier than I am right now, right? Because I was like 32. Um, but I was horribly ill and miserable, and I thought I'd never get better. And, you know, if I had just stayed in that black hole and just only focused on what was wrong and the negative, then I wouldn't be right here talking to, with you right now and have the ability to help others get better. Um, so I, yeah. I think, yeah, I just think instead of being like, you know, this is terrible and I, you know, why me and all of that, think about, you know, journal also journal, like what, what maybe was the trigger this time? Is there something I can learn from this specific incident that will make me better and more able to avoid it, um, the next time. And sometimes those things are not things that we want to hear. Like we want to be in denial, like it's <laughs> coffee, sugar, dairy, mm -hmm. alcohol, or you know, certain like people, people or situations like, like yeah, yeah they're like, I don't, don't want to hear it. I don't, I can't give that up. <laughs> diet, diet sodas for me. Mm, that I was, was hard. Horrible, horrible, <laughs> yeah, I was terrible with the diet sodas and I did not want to give it up. Now I couldn't, I couldn't drink one if you made me, I wouldn't, yeah. I just, yeah. But that's yeah. one example of, you know, just that, that willingness to really listen and really be open-minded <laughs> So. so I think I hear, I'm hearing you say two things. One is letting go of the perfectionism and realizing like nobody is perfect. <laughs> We're also not perfect. Like, no one's going to be perfect, even what they don't have yeah. migraines. So let's just say we're doing the best that we can. And, and a little bit is better than nothing. Uh, because if we're always like saying, okay, I need to exercise four or five days a week or whatever our original New Year's resolution kind of goal right. was, that's a almost impossible standard. So yeah, maybe realizing like whatever we set, we're always going to hit about 70%. And that's awesome. <laughs> we should feel good yeah. about it. And then the other thing I heard you say, I think, is maybe not ignoring the learning opportunity, which is something I like to talk about, too, is like the migraine is trying to tell you something. And I hear Absolutely. people say that, you know, doing this now, and I recognize that something I used to do, too, is be like, you just want to get back to normal as quickly as possible and kind of forget that that, yeah. you know, awful thing happened. I just want to get back. You know, I had this stuff planned. I want the migraine to go away, take medication or whatever, and then just do my life versus let's, let's pause a little bit. And yeah, journaling is good, but also looking under the hood a little bit and say in with lab testing and things like that and saying what message is the body trying to send with, with yeah. migraines. Uh, I don't know if this has too much to do with exercise, but it's just a general, <laughs> general no, philosophy just, in, right. in terms of getting back on the wagon of like, let's, yeah. let's, especially if this is happening frequently, there's something bigger going on. There's definitely something yeah. bigger, whether it's heavy metals or, or, you know, gut permeability, food sensitivities, there's something. And we just can find out what that is and move, yeah, <laughs> improve at a deeper level instead of just trying to like, yes, eating well and moving once in a while. And these kind of things is good for our health in general, but it's probably not going to get you a hundred percent of the way you had the best, you know, habits and things like that. And you're still dealing with it. Cause you had like yeah. really deep core issues to deal with. Exactly. Right. That's exactly right. Um, my family, I, I know I've told you this before, but they're always like, you know, cause I always think there's one other thing that I can do. And my family from the outside looking in is like, you're doing everything right. How on earth do you still have migraines? Um, mm -hmm. and so, but there, there were, there was more to do, but we had to be that, that investigative approach and that, that warrior mentality. Like I was saying, so you're a detective it's our responsibility to figure it out with our health coach or with our doctor. 
um, and taking that responsibility rather than trying to just fix it with a pill or whatever. But yeah, the, the exercise approach too, you know, it's, it's willpower, chill power for my, my business. Chill power. Again, <laughs> chill power is so huge and it's missing for so many people. Like the chill part, you have to have both. You have to have that, that balance um, so that the recovery side of things, the sleeping, the hydration, the stretching, I typically do, my thing is I do about 10 minutes of yoga a day. And that's what mm -hmm. I encourage other people to do. If you can get to a yoga class and do an hour, an hour and a half, that's awesome. Good, do, do it. But, you know, for a lot of people, it's not really time efficient or whatever. And so I'm like, you know, if you do about 10 maybe 15 minutes a day, that's, at, that's going to add up to be the same exact amount as if you did an hour twice a week or whatever, and your body's going to benefit more from it. So, yeah. and there are a lot of sequences and, and specific um, yoga poses um, that help people with headaches in general. And like you were saying earlier, the levator scapula, the, the you know, neck shoulder alignment is really key. So when you're exercising, whether you're a runner a cyclist, maybe you're sitting at your desk a lot, like Aaron and I do, <laughs> having awareness of posture and where your head is, both when you're exercising, that's one of the things I love about both yoga and Pilates, that they would make you more mindful of your posture and your alignment. Everybody watching probably just set up a little bit taller. But one thing that you just have to know <laughs> is that, yeah, with th this, the phone, here, this position, uh -huh. so the head is like 15 to 20 pound bowling ball on top of a stick. And it's in front of the neck and shoulders most of the day. And we're here and we're here and we're driving. And it's an immense amount of stress on the base of the skull and the cervical spine and the upper neck trapezius rhomboids. All of that is so tight on so many people and that can trigger headaches. And when, if you're a runner, for example, or even walking and you're walking with a forward head, same thing. So having that mindfulness, and that's just one thing that the myofascial release, foam rolling, um, the myofascial release video that I filmed. Yeah. You, if you don't know what you're talking about, that's in our ultimate migraine relief course. If you don't have that, you know, yeah. ping me, I can help you. That's, uh, yeah, that's in yes. there for you. So definitely it's watch just, it. <laughs> it's a, just a good way to release tension. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to go to a massage therapist because massage therapists are great. But again, you can't it's do it every day. Most people can't do it every day. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, if I get one like once a year, I'm like, you know, but ideally <laughs> you could do it a little bit more than that. But um, we, there's little self-care te techniques that you can do at home that are effective and help to reduce that stress and strain. But posture is huge, you guys. <laughs> like be aware of your posture. So much that we do do, I worry so much about the next generation too because they're, you know, at least I live the first you know, 30 years of my life without a cell phone. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the young kids now, they're, they're starting out at 10 years old, 12 years old on these gadgets like here. So I just worry about them for the future. But yeah, posture is so huge. Whether you're exercising or just sitting or driving or whatever it is that you're doing, be mindful mm -hmm. of your posture. Yes. Very yeah. good tip. If anybody again has questions, let us know. I don't haven't seen any any pop up. Hopefully, I'm not being an idiot and missing them. But <laughs> I don't hopefully, this is either. useful useful to people. But yeah, I think that's a good tip. Just be mindful of things that might cause. You said you've learned like the poses and yoga that you don't do anymore, but you also not so much with the overhead. Um, yeah, lifting, and that might not be true for everybody. But you kind of learned over time like what caused your triggers. so when you're talking about journaling and stuff we weren't just saying like okay food triggers but actually specific exercises that might lead yeah. to that problem for you in your yes. unique body and, and it is a trigger for a lot of people a lot of people you know the, the the shoulder girdle these are very small muscles at the shoulder they're not necessarily intended to hoist 100 pounds overhead like that's not a functional thing um you know if you're lifting a can of soup and putting it up on the counter or something like that. I, I don't know what, you know, but aside from that, we don't really need to hoist a lot of stuff overhead. And it does make the um, levator scapula tight and they do attach into the base of skull. So if a lot of people have this occipital pain at the base of the skull, um, that, it, yeah, overhead movements are not uh, necessarily ideal for the majority of people. Just saying. <laughs> And if you're a CrossFitter or someone like that, they'll be like totally disagreeing with me. But I'm just from from 35 years in the fitness industry, I can just tell you that a lot of people will have issues with that. It's a small muscle group, and yeah, so. 
Yeah. Jenny says she wants to learn about the myofascials. I'll connect with you after this and make sure you know where that is. No problem. Um, what else? I had this because so, I know you like it too. <laughs> um, me too. Yeah. After, um, after a workout. <laughs> if you do yeah. overdo it. <laughs> yeah. So um, essential oils in general, I am a fan. Yeah. Aaron and I are both a fan of them. But Deep Blue is a, a doTERRA product that I love and I use quite frequently, whether I have a headache or I'm just a little sore from a, a roots uh, exercising. Um, Deep Blue, and I also really like past tense. And I mm -hmm. also really like the supplements that come along. The Deep Blue supplement is a... Uh, um, naturally anti-inflammatory anti -inflammatory. yeah i use them when i have headaches too so i do like those products a lot um but i think I, have, I like that one too if you don't have it or you don't have access to that um also good to uh, keep turmeric and ginger and things like that natural anti-inflammatories if you're doing maybe you overdo it at the gym sometimes you overdo it <laughs> and you yeah. don't want that if maybe you know from the past that you overdo it you can feel that start to come and you're like oh no i'm gonna get yeah because there are exercise the next day. Induced, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. And frankincense too. I think, did you already say that? Oh, I don't know if I, I said that. Yeah. yeah. All I these things. So if you feel like, okay, I overdid it. Now it's too late. You can't go back to the gym and undo that. So you can really go after the anti-inflammatories. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, an mm -hmm. and an Epsom salt bath is a great thing. You can add a little lavender and something to that too. Cause that really does help because if you tend to have that muscle tension and you're that type of person, which I am, then, you know, an Epsom salt bath can really sort of, if you're, if you're trying to, on the prevention end. Um, yeah. Yeah. So she has someone saying is deep blue and deep oil. Blue and there oil. Is a, yeah, yeah. There is an oil um, also. I, I do both. <laughs> and when I'm really in trouble, I take the deep blue oil, which is much more concentrated and I add it to the deep blue cream <laughs> mm -hmm. and make it even more intense. Um, and so it just helps to soothe and relax yeah. and help boost circulation, which is great for um, both migraine prevention and healing. Yeah, it's a nice, yeah. uh, well, this one is just a lotion, but they have oil too. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, you and I have talked about hydration before and then not to like cover hydration in detail. And it sounds kind of obvious when you're working out, you have to stay hydrated. But I find like more and more as I do these hair mineral tests with people that mm. we have to pay attention to like how like we're balancing electrolytes and minerals with just drinking lots of water uh, more than I used to think um, a lot of people are low in potassium. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So maybe getting that tested if you can, it's easy and right. expensive test, then you know exactly, but otherwise keeping an eye on how you do with um, supplementing trace minerals as well as potassium and potassium rich foods uh, to Absolutely. help you stay hydrated beyond just chugging water. And then also being careful, like I have a um, zero water filter yeah, and that takes so. out everything. So you know, everything. if you drink, if you take out all the minerals and you know, all the contaminants too, you're left with kind of like, um, Oh, like salt that's distilled water. Of the yeah, then it's yes. going to strip you from the mineral too. So we need to add that back in and kind of pay, Absolutely. pay attention I to that. Absolutely, I agree. Um, hydration is so key, of course, with all of it, the prevention of the headaches and the um, every cell in your body needs the hydration. But if you strip all, you know, if everyone's so concerned about the contaminants and, you know, detoxifying and all of those toxins, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the minerals are so huge. Um, magnesium, yeah. pot potassium, all of them. And because if those are low, that can be a migraine trigger for sure. It totally can be. And then you're just exacerbating it by sweating. And like we love sweating and all that stuff is good for us. But you have to keep yeah. it keep it balanced and pay even more attention to that if those if exercise tends to make your migraines worse or bring it on. Yes, totally agree. Okay. Well, I think we covered the main. <laughs> yeah. I did just want to say issues. too, you know, when when people are in the thick of the black hole of the migraine that um meditation and breathing exercises using the essential oils you know those aren't exercise quote unquote like necessarily exercise but they're self-care techniques and you know just like uh when you get an airplane and people have heard this this um comparison before the flight attendants say put your oxygen mask on first and why do they say that mm -hmm. because you know and anybody who's had a migraine knows um I'm no good to any and none of my clients, none of my family members, my dogs don't get any love. Nobody gets anything when I have a migraine. And that's why it's so important to make your 
self-care, your nutrition, your sleep, your hydration, all of these things at the top of the list. I know it's really hard, especially for the working moms and all of that. But when we stop feeling guilty about our self-care and put ourselves at the top of the list, um, then we have so much more good positive energy to share with everyone else. And I know, I feel like that's part of my responsibility in the world to get especially busy working moms to get to take better care of themselves because um, it's just a hard thing to, we, we feel guilty about it sometimes. So I just think yeah. that that's really important. And, and the little things like the meditation, um, prayer, essential oils, stretching, you know, those sort of little things that you do, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. It can be 10 to 15 minutes a day. Um, whether you do it first thing in the morning, get up 15 minutes early or right before you go to bed at night. Um, Self-massage, by the way, the myofascial relief, the foam rolling, um, the essential oils are really great to do right before you go to bed because it really yeah. like I do my feet in. almost every night before bed. And Brenda's Beautiful. saying here she's found magnesium supplements to be helpful. I like yeah. magnesium and I actually like a, a lotion that has magnesium. That's what I use for my foot massages these days to get that in. I kind love of a win-win. Helps release yes. all the fascia <laughs> yeah it really does so yeah There's... i love what you're saying it applies to everything like when you have a migraine when you're recovering when you're just doing these yes self daily self-care to preventative like yeah not feeling guilty about taking time for yourself yeah. whether it's time to exercise or time to take care of yourself right. and get over it's just the hangover. i think for me personally like just learning and maybe this came with age comes with age a little bit but learning that it's okay, like say yes more to things that are truly bring you joy, whether it's exercise or, or, you know, people that you're surrounding yourself with that really truly align with you and bring, make you happy. Um, and that goes back to like the dance scenario or swimming or whatever it is that really truly brings you joy instead of making yourself do things that don't bring you joy. And then learning it's okay to say no. Um, sometimes to things that are en energy vampires and sucking the life force out of you, um, because that's when we're more prone, I think, to migraines too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's not necessarily an exercise tip. That's more just a tip in general. Um, life tips. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, yeah. Karen, full of life tips, and she's a pro at helping you customize your plan because you might listen to this and like half of it might work for you and half of it you need to adjust and yes like that's what she does is she helps people go through what's working and then troubleshoot what's not working and come up with an actual plan that is going to work try it for a while adjust and repeat that's yeah. kind of what health coaching is for <laughs> and we all need that sometimes in our life and I, you know that's why we do what we do <laughs> yeah absolutely so thank you guys for tuning in and for listening thank you karen for for being here if you want to speak with Karen, um, you know, you can set up a 20 minute call. We actually have a bonus going on for you guys, just for you listeners. If you um, do a case review with Karen in this month for uh, Migraine Awareness Month, uh, case review is our, or is our two session uh, starter package for new clients. So you really go into like big picture what's going on and all the different lifestyle areas. And then in the second one, you'll have homework to work on and uh, get a health plan, a 90 day health plan for what makes sense for you going forward, because it, there's endless things we all could be doing, but you want to know what you should be doing <laughs> first. So okay, she'll help you prioritize what makes sense um, and, and put that together in an actual, actual plan. So that's our case review. If you book a case review with Karen this month and tell me, you know, just message me or email me or whatever that you heard about it on this call, uh, I'm going to give you a ticket or a recording, depending on when you catch me, for our special class that's coming up uh, next week, which is about uh, medical cannabis for migraines. Uh, we'll be speaking with Dr. Jessica Hutchin of Cleveland Functional Medicine, who actually prescribes different cannabis products, not just CBD, but like, you know, <laughs> the, the real stuff <laughs> in her practice uh, for people with migraines and has found it helpful and has a lot of information to share. So I'll be talking with her about, you know, frequently asked questions about your questions. And so a great chance to ask questions um, of Dr. Hitchens. And of course, if you can't make it live, we'll give you the recording. So that's coming up. Uh, the 21st, so hopefully you can join us. And again, if you if you um, sign up for a case review this month, then tell me, then we're gonna throw that in as a bonus. Uh, a little thank you present for my Gate Awareness Month. So thanks for listening, and thank you again, Karen, for, for being here. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. It's always fun <laughs> to talk. Hear yeah. what's up with you. Yeah, hopefully you guys found this helpful, and well, let me know if you need anything else. So talk to you later. Bye, everybody.
拜。